We know there's a lot of things I've been able to get done in the Senate. There's some things I haven't been able to get done, but I want to finish what I've started in mental health and health care research for victims of child abuse, Special Olympics, greater job opportunities. And it looks like to me that the things that we really should be focusing on for jobs in our state uh, are the things that are going to happen when world food needs double in 35 or 40 years, looking at transportation, fighting against the regulators that are clearly out of control, and I hope we get some help in, in that fight against these out of control regulators. What role should the Senate play in the effort to defeat ISIS abroad and prevent further attacks here at home? Well, I, I, the, the Senate, particularly at the in intelligence perspective, needs to be very aware of all the threats that we're seeing, needs to be willing to provide the resources necessary to fight the fight. Uh, but the president has to lead. You know, the president can't draw red lines that don't mean anything. The president can't refuse uh, to provide air cover or safe zones in Syria. Uh, and then here five years later, uh, people say, well, what, what, what's the Senate going to do about this? The commander in chief has failed. Our viewers want to know where you stand on the Trans-Pacific Partnership. Well, the Trans-Pacific Partnership's not done yet. I do think opening up markets uh, to products made in Missouri and grown in Missouri is a good thing, but we need to be sure that we open those markets in a way that we have fair trade as well as trade. And uh, so I've introduced legislation, some of which uh, has been recently passed that requires the president uh, to do, to enforce the, uh, the trade agreements we currently have. I think when you see those, if those trade agreements are currently uh, that we currently have are properly enforced, people are going to look at uh, how we can ex expand the opportunity for Missouri-made products and Missouri-grown grown products to go all over the world. Jason Kander's campaign has accused you of putting well-funded special interests ahead of Missourians and has criticized the fact that several members of your family are lobbyists. How do you respond to that criticism? Well, I think Jason Kander would rather talk about my family than what he's going to do to your family. Uh, policies that would raise utility bills, policies that would expand rather than change Obamacare. Obamacare has been a disaster. Jason Kander has been a supporter of Obamacare and the public option. In other words, government having one of the options you could go to as a, as a government paid for option. Now USA Today reviewed your financial documents and found you claimed a number of addresses as your home address, including a home that you own in D.C. Should voters be concerned about that? Well, you know, they sent me to D.C. to do a job that requires me to be there four or five days uh, every week, and we have, a, we have a place to live both places. Uh, that's the way this almost always works, and certainly the way it works if you're going to do your job at either end of that job in uh, the right way. And I think what uh, you know, when, you, when you're having documents sent to you, you try to have those documents sent to wherever you're likely to be that day. Uh, and uh, I don't think that's a problem for voters. Immigration has dominated this year's presidential campaign. What policy would you push for? Well, I think there are really three problems. And one is how to secure the border. Two is what are the legitimate workforce needs of the country. And three is uh, what do you do about people who came or stayed illegally. Uh, if you solve that first problem, a reasonable security of the border. Uh, I think the other two problems are fairly easy to solve. Now some of your Senate colleagues, notably John McCain, still say they will not vote for Trump, Donald Trump. Now in light of the uh, recent allegations involving uh, sexual misconduct going beyond uh, mere words and actual actions, what is your position? Well, you don't decide who's going to be the president based on allegations or Bill Clinton would have never been president. Hillary Clinton wouldn't be the nominee Why? for president. You've Why? got to look, I think, at who's likely to help solve the problems. Obamacare is a rolling disaster. Uh, the regulators are out of control and constantly stand in the way of better jobs for Missouri families. The foreign policy is terrible. Uh, a third Obama term is not the way to solve that. Hillary Clinton is not the answer. Uh, and so I'm looking at the other candidate as the candidate. The, the Trump-Pence ticket is much more likely to solve those three problems than the alternative. In 10 words or fewer, why should voters pick you? Because I listen to them, I fight for them, uh, and I understand our state.